How you doing? How you feeling, young nigga? Bitch, I always get high and I'm a Midwest nigga. I ain't smoking on no man cause I got can of coke with us who rolling. What's up guys? Welcome to the Scotty Show. Um today I just wanted to cover um some anime um news and uh one of my favorite um animes, uh Cowboy Bebop. Um one of the writers um on the show uh Keiko uh, Nobumoto um, died at 57. Um, definitely one of the saddest, uh, like, uh, anime writers' uh, death um, for me. Only, like, really because, like, like Cowboy Bebop, uh, like, like, it, like, it's, like, very um, nostalgic. It was very nostalgic for me as a child. Um, and I still love watching it to this day. I, I literally was watching it uh, last week and I finished it. And like, I always forget that Spike dies at the end. And I'm just like, wow, dies at the end. It's so crazy. And uh, I even, you know, I still haven't opened this, but I got one of the records right here. So dope. I brought this a while ago. I think I got this either last, I think I got this last year. Um, but yeah, um, it was definitely, you know, uh, since I'm a really big anime fan, um, I just wanted to just talk about it. Um, Cause, you know, I, I just remember just being a kid, just waking up uh, at, in the middle of the night at like 11. And that, this is how I got into Cowboy Bebop um just just waking up at 11 a.m on uh, not 11 a 11 p.m adult swim would be on and i would just you know cowboy bebop would be on code Geass, um uh, what else oh. inuyasha will come on that's how i kind of really got into um anime by myself uh but my uncle kind of put me on anime he put me on dragon ball z um Full, actually, I got into Full Metal Alchemist through Adult Swim as well, but uh, Dragon Ball Z and like One Piece and all that stuff, like the uh, those like really really super mainstream animes, I got uh, I got into those through my uncle because he was he's really into anime and and things like that. But like like the ones that you know that weren't on Toonami, I don't know if Cowboy Bebop was on Toonami, but I I normally saw it like Big O. Like I normally saw those things on, you know, uh, on Adult Swim, and it's just crazy. Like, like it's almost, uh, you know, when you're like growing up and you're watching these things, and um, and like it's kind of weird. Like you, you feel like you're growing up with these characters. Like you're you're growing with them. Like when I watched Naruto, I was a kid watching Naruto, and Naruto is an adult, and I'm an adult now. Like, it's so weird to see them and then they like die off. Like eventually Naruto dies in, you know, the Baruto anime from, from what I hear, from what I'm hearing right now. And like Sasuke and all of them like eventually die. And it's like, it's just so like, it's just so crazy. Like how people like anime, like it's, it's really, it's really good at making you emotionally, like if you're really into it, like the the way that some of them are written out, you are able to get like emotionally like invested into like these characters, and like you feel like you grew up with them. You feel like you went through everything in life with them, and uh, yeah. Um, R.I.P. to uh, you know. Um, let me pull up her name one more time, so I don't, don't want to mess it up. Out of out of respect. But Keiko Nomuboto, uh, Nobumoto, um, yeah, RIP, man. It's so crazy, especially dying at 57. I feel like a lot of these um, anime, you know, writers, um, they, they die at, you know, I don't want to say 57 is a young age, but they die at, you know, they, they, I look at like those ages as like not prime ages, but like you're just, you know, just chilling age. And I'm just, I just wonder like what kind of like stresses are they under when they're writing because I hear about some um some anime uh you know writers and stuff they're not even allowed that some, some of them weren't even allowed to have you know 
uh, social media platforms. You know, some of them just now were able to have social media platforms and stuff like that. So I just wonder, like, what kind of stresses and stuff that they were under, um, you know, because dying at 57 is just so weird. I just wonder if that person probably had something or some kind of disease or whatever the case may be. But, yeah, I mean, like, Cowboy Bebop will, will you know, like, always be a part of my life and hopefully like you know one day when i have kids like i'm able to share that like you know anime with them like you know this is what i was watching you know growing up like that is like my thing um yeah i just really hope uh I, and then like i saw like the netflix you know i watched the first episode of it of the cowboy bebop you know real life adaption i don't i'm not really a big fan of um real life anime adaptions people like I don't, I don't even consider them like you can't recreate that like how you can recreate like a marvel you know like marvel you can i feel like those are easier to recreate than doing because like what are what are marvel characters doing just flying around and doing a you know just doing regular superhero shit like anime characters are like I feel like they do more, like they're they're way outside of the realm of a uh, of a um, they're outside of the realm of like a Marvel superhero, and I feel like people are way more invested in like I don't know how it is logistically, but I feel like a lot more people are invested into anime character personalities than Marvel and DC character personalities. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but like it kind of seems like people are way more invested into like the anime characters than the, you know, Marvel DC characters. I just feel like, uh, you know, anime has a little bit more substance to it, but uh, when, um, what was it that came out? Um, Invincible. When Invincible came out, I think, that was, I think that's what it's called, Invincible. Because I, it was like it came out on Amazon. Um, yeah, I think I think it is Invincible. Um, but I watched that when it first came out. It, it was the craziest, one of the craziest like comic book type shows that I've seen. And then I figured out that it is a comic book, and you know you can read up on it, learn about it, and all that other stuff. But like that one, you know, I was like. It, for that, you kind of didn't even want to get invested into the characters because you didn't know who was going to die. Like, and that was, and it was honestly a little like I don't want to say it was too gory for me, but sometimes there were moments that I was really like cringing, and I was just like, "Yo, like this is way too much." But that was honestly like one of like the best, uh, you know, DC Marvel type, you know, uh, shows that are coming out. And then now you see like all these other um like Hit Monkey. Hit Monkey is a Marvel um on Hulu, Marvel show on Hulu. And now they are, you know, kind of like recreating that like invincible type um style of making a Marvel cartoon type uh TV show. But back to Cowboy Bebop, like I, I didn't like the first episode I watched the of the real life adaption. I do like uh, the main character that's in it, and I, I just the person that played Spike. I think his name is John Cho. I think I think his name is John Cho. I think I think that's his name. But um, I, I think that he was a decent Spike, and I think that you know, it just you should just leave animes alone. <laughs> like when when it comes to like the real life adaptions until like people can but i'm happy that they're making it because they're trying to figure it out so like you can't really like um and that's probably it's like what they did with you know when they made like the first hulk movie there the first hulk movie was probably was, was trash like now look at the hulk and and marvel avengers look at like all these other like superhero movies i guarantee you the first batman movie was trash um the first uh like the first superman movie was probably trash like they're gonna have to try to keep on cranking these out to figure out, but like can't like but and I heard it got canceled too. I heard Cowboy Bebop after its first uh, after the first season on Netflix got canceled, um, but I don't think that like 
you you cancel the show because like how then then how do you figure it out like how do you know what the formula is to create a really good anime real life adaption television show um and I don't think you figure it out by just making one season and then just canceling it the next season. Like you gotta keep on building, especially out of respect for the like for the writers that you know put all that hard work into it and for the people that you know and pretty much Cowboy Bebop is one season. It's like 27 episodes, I think. Like they should have just made 27 episodes of Cowboy Bebop and then just put it out. Why are we making more than one season when it's just one season for the anime? They should have just, you know, just made, you know, 27 episodes, boom, put it out. But yeah, it, it's um definitely should uh should keep I, I just don't like anime like you know real life adaption shows. But keep on making them so you could so you people can figure out the formula. Um, hopefully, we can get a you know a anime real life adaption show where it's kind of like how Avengers is now, where we you know where it's to the T how it's supposed to be. Hopefully, we get that. I don't know when that day will come. I feel like it's gonna be a couple more years till we figure it out. Uh, I do see people like, you know, on YouTube making their own, you know, real life adaption, anime type things. I do see, um, you know, there's, there's so many creative people on, on YouTube and people that like, just like how like uh, people like have like these, uh, these mods for GTA, uh, GTA 4, GTA 5 or whatever. Like I watch them on YouTube and like they look way better than like what people play on PlayStation 5. Like, why don't you guys hire these people to do, you know, some of that dirty work just because they don't have a degree or I don't, I don't, I don't know what the, what the problem or the issue is with that. But I feel like people should really like, you know, pay attention to these people that are creating content on YouTube and then putting it out there and give, putting out these ideas, start consulting these people. Um, Cause number one, like number one, they, they are a fan of the product that you know the big players put out so therefore they have someone to study off of so they understand the product probably even better than the person that created the product because they're such a big fan of it um and then they're able to recreate something else and then put it out there and it, it kind of looked better than what the original product that came out from the bigger companies um but yeah man like I, Bebop for life, man. That's all I gotta say. Bebop for life. Like, the, down to, like, the music and everything, like, it really got me into, uh, like, that jazzy, poppy, like, kind of, like, sound. Like, I like I love, like, like the, the... I had one of the best soundtracks. Like, I even, like, some of, like, like, it opened me up to, like, such, like, different genres of music. I, like, loved how, like, the futuristic feel and style of it was people traveling through space and they're bounty hunters and stuff like it was something that I have never seen before as a kid and then like watching it now as an adult and like I'm looking at it and like I'm observing it and I'm just like this is wow like this is way ahead of its time and it like it just needs more appreciation for it like the I don't know what the budget was for Cowboy Bebop for Netflix but they should the budget should have been higher like they gotta set the like for these animes, real life adaptions that people are trying to make, the budget needs to be just as much as Marvel Avengers budget. Even though there may not be a very big market, you know, for people to buy that pro, uh, to, for people to want to buy that product. But why even to waste the money to put out something that's not that good, and then you're gonna end up canceling it anyways? It's not like you know. Might as well put your best foot forward and put your best work out. Um, just kind of doesn't make any sense to me. Um, yeah, man, like, especially when, like, seeing, like, Spike, like, when he, like, passed away, man, it was, I know when uh, Boy and uh, Valentine, I think that's her name, was trying to stop him from going. Man. 
it's just like it's just so it's just so crazy. And then I love the episode where they were on the ship and like uh, that little purple gooey thing was like attacking everybody. And then uh, Spike ate it. Like that was so crazy. Like, man, one of the great one of the one of the greatest shows I've ever seen. And definitely one of my favorite animes uh, to come out. Um, you know, even though I wasn't like, you know, even though it came out, I think 19, I think it was 1998, something like that. So when I started watching it, I was probably 10 years old. So like, I'm guessing like 2005, 2006, I was probably waking up at like 11 p.m. And I was watching it. And then, like, I was watching all the animes up until, like, 5 a.m. The next thing you know, I had school. And then I would fall asleep in school because I would just stay up and watch, like, anime. Because, like, those were, like, kind of like the, like, uh, the animes that were on Toonami, they weren't as hardcore. Because, you know, you had Zatch Bell. You had Dragon Ball Z. Then you had uh, Bo, 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 whatever that, like, I don't know how to say that, but, uh. Yeah, I know what else? I know Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, I loved Hack, Hack. I started um, re-watching, um, I started watching Hack because I didn't really finish it. it and kind of like Cowboy Bebop, like I would, I would just watch like whatever episode came on Toonami. And it was pretty much just uh, like just random episodes that were coming on. So... That's what I would watch. And then I started, like, you know, I was like, okay, now I need, I, I want to I wanna actually watch, like, the season fully through and understand what I'm looking at and what I'm watching. Um, and then I just, you know, like, I just fell in, I fell in love with Cowboy Bebop, you know, like, the, like, down to the music, down to the character details, down to, like, how, like, it, it just kind of revolutionized how you know animes were made from then on um and then i love like so i don't like uh i don't like the the english dub versions of new of, of the newer animes but the older animes i can watch the english dubs and not have a single problem with it Whew. and like I, I like th just the voice acting back then was you know i loved it, it I, I think it's way i think the voice acting and the English dub of animes, like the older ones, way better. Like Inuyasha's voice, um, English dub, really loved it. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, just drop this video um, and just just talk about Cowboy Bebop and you know what it like, you know, meant to me. I, I know I went on like a random tangent on a lot of other things, but yeah, like. And you can, you know, drop drop stuff in the comments and stuff and, you know, what you guys feel about, how you guys feel about Cowboy Bebop in the series and, um, yeah, man, uh, R.P. Keiko, uh, Nobumoko, Nobumoko, like, and that's so crazy, like, because I, like, you know, and it's sad that, like, I, fi that I find out who uh, Keiko Nobumoto I, it's just sad that I find out who these writers are when they die. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously, like, you know, as I got older, I knew who the writer for Naruto was. Um, I knew who the writer for Dragon Ball Z is. But these older ones, like Inuyasha, uh, Big O, Cowboy Bebop, like, I kind of figure out, like, who the um, the writer is, at, like, when they pass away. And I just, I just think I need to do my, you know, better due, due diligence of doing my research on these uh, animes when I speak on them. And I, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just talking as like a fan and someone that, you know, really loved the anime um, as a child and as an adult now. And, and it's just so crazy just growing up with these animes. And when you get older, you just watch them and you're just like, man, like, I just remember being a kid watching this. Like, and you, you were just a kid in your room watching these things. And like, that's why I love things like Nintendo and for the nostalgia. Like, I like, like, uh, those, those kind of, like, things. Like, I love, like, you know, I like, I like PlayStation, but, like, it doesn't, like, the new consoles don't give me a nostalgic feeling. 
Like when I play a uh, Nintendo Switch, I f I have a nostalgic feeling. Um, like looking at a PlayStation Two will give me a nostalgic feeling. Playing a PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, which you know that's you know that's the obviously it's supposed to get better, and you're not supposed to be like, oh, this makes me feel like a, a kid again. But like, I think that uh, you know, just just looking back on all these animes, you know, and just so many great so many great things and and now anime is getting like it's a lot more popular than what it was back then and i'm so happy that people are really getting into anime now um i remember people used to hate on anime all the time i remember people used to call me a weirdo for because i remember i had myspace my whole myspace was naruto like my my profile picture was sasuke or neji um my background was like naruto and sasuke doing the rasen like the, the shippuden characters doing the rasengan and the chidori together and then um I just remember, uh, you know, just, just, just crazy, man. I, I remember, I remember, like, just going on YouTube and like looking at, uh, just like the Naruto Shippuden that was coming out in Japan. I had to like figure out how to like watch it on, you know, YouTube, or I would go to uh, anime44.com or Anime Nova. And like it, it, it's just it was just so crazy. Like just thinking back, like like this was like ten years ago. <laughs> and uh, you know, just I just want to like keep, I just want to show my uh, you know appreciation more, um, you know, of, of those things. And yeah, man, uh, this is the Scotty Show. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, drop a like, comment. Talk, talk about your favorite animes in the comments. Um, talk about your memories with Cowboy Bebop. Uh, I'm going to buy some more Cowboy Bebop like things. I know I got this, but I just saw it. Uh, I saw it on the uh, Funimation. Um, I think I got this either on the Crunchyroll website or the Funimation website. I think I got it on the Funimation uh, website. And, you know, I just never, I never opened it. But it came with a pressed uh, translucent red marble and a uh, press on purple marble. Translucent purple marble. And then I just love the background of this. And I actually, I have the, uh, one of the, uh, I have one of the, you know, the TV show soundtracks on my phone. And I, I started listening to it. Um, because, like, I'm a really big fan of, uh, I'm a really big fan of um, just, like, certain anime songs and, like, their soundtracks and, like, how they pick out what they like. And, you know, I just started, like, doing that more. I just started, like, downloading uh, more uh, anime, like, soundtracks, like, show soundtracks and just, like, listening to them. I don't really, like, like... I know some people just listen to them and they're like, why are you listening to like a, a TV show intro? I'm just like, I don't like, this is like a, it's a, to me, it's a really good song. And I like, I just like their, like the way that they pick their songs out. Um, Cause it has a mixture of American feel. And then you have that Japanese Asian feel and it's like combined together. And like, I get like uh like that, like uh, not Valley, but like, m like Middle American on the countryside vibes, cowboy, obviously cowboy bebop, and then I get like uh, upper high class, j like you're living in Japan, Tokyo vibes, like and, and and like I just love that mixture of how like they they molded that together, and I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, man. Um, yeah, this is the Scotty Show. Peace.